this video, I want to explain how to calculate the self and mutual inductance of these two coils. Let's jump into it. First, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel. And also, if you're seeing value in this video, make sure you're giving it a thumbs up. It really makes a huge difference. At the second point, I explained in my previous video how to calculate the self-inductance of a coil and it is better to watch that video before this one. Okay, first I want to explain how to draw such a geometry. In this geometry, this is one of our coils which has one turn. This is the second coil that has 10 turns and the rest are the surrounding air. If you know how to draw such geometry, you can just skip this part, but this time I want to draw this geometry using the sketch properties of the software. After opening the software, just select the model wizard and here select the two axis symmetric. Under the ACDC and electromagnetic fields, you can just select or add magnetic field, which is called MF. And in the study, you should select frequency damping because the inductance makes sense when you have an alternating citation. Okay. Click on done and we jump into our model. Okay, first under the geometry, I set the unit to centimeter, then uh, zoom out to reach 100 centimeter in the above and in the low part. First, I want to draw the surrounding air, but I want to use an option in the software which is called the infinite element dummy. I need a very large space around my coils for the magnetic fields, but I don't want to draw such a large domain really in the software. The console has an option called infinite element domain that you can define and tell the software that, for example, this specific domain is 100 times larger than the things that I have drawn. In this way, you can simulate a very large domain, but keep the needed processing power low. Okay, come. To the sketch, I first want an arc here. Come here under the circular arc. There are three options. I select the start, center, and angle, which you select the start point, the center point, and also the angle of your curve. Okay, I come here, select this point, 100 centimeter. The second point is my center, which would be zero and zero. And this is my angle. I need it to be 180 degree. Afterward, you can see that the software let you to to add another curve, I just right click and select finish circular arc. This is done. For the inner arc, I simply duplicate my arc and set the radius to 80 centimeter. Build selected. This is my inner arc. Under the polygon, I can very simply draw a line from here to here. Right click, finish polygon. Everything is good. If I build my object, you can see if you just come here and uh, select domains, you can see that there are no domains in my geometry. The only things that is here is boundaries. This is because I have used the sketch properties. The inner side of these boundaries are empty. In order to fulfill the inner part, you should come here to the geometry. There is an option here says conversion and there is an option here convert to solid it turns every closed boundaries to a solid domain the same thing that i need select convert to solid it says input object here you can just select box okay very well and nothing should be changed just build all objects now you can see that you have also domains in your geometry. Okay, let's draw our coil. I select a circle, set the R coordinate to 50 and keep the radius at one centimeter. This is my first coil. For the second coil, I just draw one turn first, set the R to eight and Z also to eight. Keep the radius as one centimeter. And I want to transform this one turn to 10 turn 
For that, I use the array option under tra the transforms. It will let you to copy an object multiple times in a certain pattern. Okay, first I should uh, select the input object, use the selection box, this is my object. I want the array to be rectangular, I need two columns and five rows and set the R displacement to four and Z displacement to minus four because this should be copied downward. You can just do the calculation yourself. And if I set build all objects, we have our second coil and I set form union or build all and my geometry has finished. To set the outer domain to infinite element domain, as I told earlier, come here in definitions right click on definitions and select infinite element domain you should select your domain i do this then you should set your type this is an sphere therefore i set the type to be spherical but the other options like cylindrical or user defined are also available the center coordinate of this sphere is zero and zero let this be and this number which is now thousand says the software that simulate this domain as as a domain which is thousand times larger. This is a very good option that console has provided in the software. Okay, let's set our materials. Uh, I need air from built-in for the surrounding domains and I also need copper for my coils. For the copper, I just use the selection box and set the coils. Therefore, this is air and this is copper. Everything is set. Don't forget to save your model. Let's define the physics. Uh, the Ampere's law has been defined to be solved in all of our domains. I just accept that. We should define these two coils as coils in the physics. Right click on here, select the coil. The material type is solid. The coil name is one. And I select this turn. This is my first coil, which is only one turn. I set the coil excitation at current. I will explain it shortly why. Okay, I select another coil and add all of these conductors, the 10 ones. Set the material type to solid. The coil name is two. And the coil excitation should be current. Don't forget to check the coil group. If you do not check the coil group this is considered to be a one turn coil that has 10 parallel conductors if you check the coil group this is a 10 turn coil that has 10 turns in series this is the thing that we want we don't want a single turn coil we want a 10 turn coil okay why i set the coil excitation to current and i also set one of these current to zero why i do that Let's go back to a little bit of theory. This is two coils or two inductances that has mutual inductance. The self-inductance of the first coil is L1, the second one is L2, and the mutual inductance is M. I have supposed that I1 is fed through the first coil and I2 is fed through the second coil, and V1 is the voltage of the first coil and V2 is the voltage of the second coil. From the circuit theory, we know that such a relationship exists between the voltage of coils and the current through the coils. For example, V1 equals J omega L1 multiplied by its current plus J omega M multiplied by the current of the other coil. In the first equation, if I set I1 to 0 and set I2 to 1 ampere, you can see that this term is removed and we V1 equals J omega M multiplied by I2, which is 1. Therefore, V1 equals J omega M. Therefore, M equals the imaginary part of the induced voltage divided by omega. This is why I set the excitation of coils to current and set the current of one coil to zero and the other one to one ampere. Afterward, I can simply calculate the mutual inductance by calculating.
computing this equation. Let's get back to our model. I set the excitation of coil 1 to 0 ampere and coil 2 to 1 ampere. Therefore, I should calculate the induced voltage on the first coil. Okay, I set the mesh to the physical control wall. Normal is okay. And the frequency domain, I set the frequency to 50 hertz because I want to calculate the self and mutual inductance at 50 hertz. Okay, let's compute our model. Uh, this is the magnetic field lines and the magnetic field intensity. To calculate the mutual inductance, simply come to drive values, select global evaluation. Here under the parameters, under magnetic fields, coil parameters, you can find here the coil voltage of the first coil because now coil 2 has excitations. And there are also another parameter here which is called angular frequency or omega. And now I add a function, imaginary part of this voltage divided by mf dot omega. I do not need this one, therefore I delete this. You can see that the unit is uh, set to Weber by the software. If you want your unit to be naturally hungry, I divided this by one ampere. Now you can see that the unit has been changed to hungry. I set it to micro hungry and the description mutual inductance. Everything is ready. Just click on evaluate. You can see that the mutual inductance between the two coils equals 0 0.4 microhen. You can also calculate the self inductance of the coil that has excitation. For that, you just can come here under the magnetic field coil parameters. Here says the coil inductance. I should select the coil inductance of the second coil because it has excitations and set it also to microhenry. Clear this one and evaluate the mutual inductance. Here, the coil inductance 10 microhenry. If you want the self inductance of the first coil, I just come here to magnetic field, set the excitation of the first coil to 1 ampere, excitation of the second oil coil to 0 ampere. Recalculate our model. Come to global evaluation. I set this one to coil two and this one to coil one and evaluate again. The mutual inductance should be the same. This is from the electromagnetic theory that M12 should equals M21 and the coil inductance equals 2.6 microhenry. As the last point, if you come here to see the 3D uh, representation of our model, you can see that everything has been revolved including the surrounding air. If we don't want to show the surrounding air, you can just come here under data set, right click on our data set, it is our study, add selection. In the selection, you can set that what elements, what domains, what boundaries are included in the representation. I set the entire geometry to domain and select only the conductors. Therefore, if you plot the revolve, you can see that only the uh, turns have been revolved. You can also set the degree to 0, 360, which is a complete turn. If you come here, you can see see that only the trains have been revolved. Okay, this is the end of my video. If you have found this video helpful, don't forget to like it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss our future tutorials of console multi physics. In my next videos, I want to explain how to simulate transformers in console multi physics. Stay tuned and see you next time.